Adumo Philadelphia Adeshe Kron Kron. The Lord bless us all wherever we are in our homes. The Lord bless you wherever you are. Today is another edition of the sermon summary of Stephen Adun Chedia, the voice of God's sermon. Today is the 22nd of August, 2021. Well, today we've been blessed by this wonderful sermon given unto us through Stephen Adun Chedia, the voice of God. Today he started his sermon by asking the choir in the church the words in the song that they were ministering unto the church. And in a nutshell, this was the whole song. I want nothing else but wisdom. I desire nothing else but wisdom. And the word of God also states that for the fear of the Lord, is the beginning of wisdom and anyone who fears the lord obeys his word may the lord bless us all well let's dive deep into what stephen adun chedia the voice of god communicated to the entire congregation he said that today we philadelphians are stepping up to another level in our faith this was the message that he communicated to some people or men of God. That some people or men of God in quotes think that he came to battle them. Well, today Stephen Adam Chedia, the voice of God, said we Philadelphia Royals are stepping up to another level in our faith. He said that because of his messages some people or men of God in court think that he has come to battle them in a way but he wants them to understand that his messages has been in existence for past many years if today is the time that they are hearing his messages then they should be aware that his messages has been in existence for so many years and they should let their heart be at peace. Today, now let's move on to today's message. Today's message is entitled, What is all about prayer material? What is all about prayer material? And even why this topic today? According to Stephen Adun Chedia, the voice of God, he said at times he used to forget certain things, but when the Lord is being pressed on, it reminds him of certain things that he has even treated and then passed over. So today he wants us to understand what prayer material is all about. And where cometh this word prayer material? According to Stephen Adum Chedia, the voice of God, he said he has been hearing that some people or some men of God saying that he is selling prayer materials, but rather also condemning the sales of other prayer materials in other firms or churches. He wants us to understand what prayer material is all about. According to Stephen Adum Chedia, the voice of God, prayer material, that word or name, prayer material, came from this Bible quote that faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. Then it means that if we have faith in God, then we should work things around the clock and when we would meet whatever we believe in, that is God. Let's move on to how Stephen Adun Chedia, the voice of God, explained what prayer is. He said that prayer is a communication between man and God. 
prayer a communication between man and then God how we communicate between us and then God and then prayer material prayer and then the attaching material to it he said that this prayer material serves as a point of contact to connect us to God himself as a point of contact to connect us to the things of God so that is prayer material. I believe we are all following and then we are getting it. Per the explanation, Stephen Adum Chedia, the voice of God gave unto us. There was once in the house of Solomon, King Solomon in the Bible, he had visitors. And then these visitors, they came along with their prayer materials. These were visitors uh, that were not worshipping the God of Israel. They were also worshipping other deity they proclaim to be God. They came with their prayer materials and then under the roof of Solomon, they also communicated to their God using their prayer material, the God of their land, who is by far so many miles away from them. But through their prayer materials, they were able to communicate to such a God. According to Stephen Adam Chaudia, the voice of God, even Muslims, Muslims also have their prayer material, their attaching prayer material. They have the, the Buddha, they have other um, incenses. I don't want to dive deep into that. We, even with the Catholic, the Catholic have what we call the holy water. They have certain incenses through which they are able to communicate to the end of their faith, that is God. So when the Muslims are communicating to Allah, they have their special prayer material through which they use to communicate to God. With the help of the Holy Spirit, through Stephen Adum Chedia, the voice of God, there was this mystery that was being unfolded unto us about prayer material. Well, according to Stephen Adum Chedia, the voice of God, he wants us to understand something, a certain fact. We have a manufacturer and then an agent. A manufacturer and then the manufacturer's agent. For instance, let's say the manufacturer of um, the Toyota manufacturers, they manufacture, for instance, vehicles that are being tagged or named with the Toyota um, brand. Here in Ghana, we have their agents, the garment. They deal with the Toyota spare parts meaning they have this direct link with the manufacturers. So when you visit the office of the garment, what you are expected to see is products, spare parts that, that are being branded with the name Toyota. You can't go to the garment office and then you'll be seeing um, spare parts being branded with Hyundai, Nissan, and then the rest just to mention a few so every manufacturer has their agents for instance um, we have textiles the textile company in Ghana when the textile company company in Ghana realized that there have been some people who are trying to imitate their product come out with another style of their product which looks like this they came out to arrest all of them because they were not the right agents for such a textile company in Ghana. So let's keep in mind these words, manufacturer, agent, manufacturer, and then the agent. Let's move on to the quotation Stephen Adunchi, the voice of God, dealt on today. John 
chapter 9 from verses 1, then we would read. I'm reading from this end, please, if we can project for all viewers in our homes to also follow. John chapter 9, verses 1. And as Jesus passed, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, the verse 3, Neither have this man sinned, nor his parents, but the works of God should be made manifest in him. This was the question. Master, there was an incident, an event that occurred in the Bible. As Jesus was passing, he saw a man who was being born blind. And then according to words that were in the air, in the atmosphere, they were saying that his parents were the cause, their sins, or even the man himself. That is why he's been born blind. That is why he's facing this natural disaster. Now, per the explanation Stephen Adun Chedia, the voice of God gave concerning this quote from verse 1 to 3, the disciples were asking, they wanted to know, because if you are an, an agent, you are expected to direct us to the manufacturer. Why? Because an agent you are dealing with a particular product that is being branded with the manufacturer's name. As Steve Nadine Chida, the voice of God, cited with Garment, dealing with Toyota's spare parts. So the disciples wanted to know there has been a natural disaster. A man is born blind. And this is the notion. They are attributing it to whether the parent or the sins of the man himself. But when Jesus heard this, Jesus, who was an agent of a particular manufacturer, Jesus Christ, an agent of the true manufacturer, God, the omnipotent, the one who created you and I, the one who manufactured us. Jesus was his agent. And because Jesus being an agent of God, the manufacturer, and then he bearing spare parts that came from the manufacturer. Let's hear the answer that Jesus gave to his disciples in the verse 3. Jesus answered, Neither have this man sinned, nor his parents, but the works of God should be made manifest in him. Well, according to Stephen Adum Chedia, the voice of God today, if you are a man of God, if you claim that you are being called and sent, by a manufacturer then as an agent you should speak well of your manufacturer your words everything about you should speak well of or should stand for the manufacturer in whose name you are working for because jesus an agent of the true manufacturer the one who created you and i the one who made that blind man. He answered by saying, This natural disaster hailed from nowhere, but my manufacturer, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who created you and I. So Jesus attributed everything unto his manufacturer. That was God. So he's asking, We have men of God who are out claiming that they've been sent by God. Paul said, as I saw Jesus and learned from him, so should you also learn from me. 
is that step. We are all following that same um, footsteps, that same path. And the path of God does not change, it's one. So if you are a man of God and you claim that you are working for the true manufacturer, the one who created all human beings, everything in this world, why is it then that whatever plight, whatever challenge that comes our way, why do we attribute the cause to an unknown manufacturer, to a different manufacturer other than God who created us? According to Stephen Adunchedi, the voice of God, he said that even with the fetishes, the fetish priest, if it were to be the fetish priest who came and they met such a scenario, they would claim everything and attribute it to their God. You are facing this challenge because it is God who has made you that way. He is the one who did it. How come we men of God with titles, reverend, bishops, prophets, being in the shoes of the agent of the true manufacturer, but at the same time, we are confessing a different manufacturer in all manner of situations that comes our way. Jesus never did so. And in our era today, we have this one man, Stephen Adum the voice of God, under his ministry, he has never in any way attributed any event, any challenge, any plight to any other thing except that one true manufacturer who made you and I. So he would just laugh at whatever challenge that you came with and then he would say <laughs> relax let your heart be at peace it's because of you that God sent me it's because of you that I've become an agent for the true manufacturer had it not been because of your plight he wouldn't have sent me with this spare part with these materials, it's because of you. He created you. He is the manufacturer. I'm his agent. So Stephen Adam Chedia, the voice of God, will never attribute your challenges to any other thing except God. He would make sure your mind has been renewed. That you would accept the fact that you have erred against God. That you have to plead for his mercy so that God himself will be made manifest through you. Please, let's continue. Let's continue. The verse 4 said, I must work of him that sent me. I must work the works of him that sent me. Whilst it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. As long as I'm in the world... I am the light of the world. According to Stephen Adun the voice of God, can, for instance, can an MPP minister go and then speak for the other opposing party or the NDC? No. If you're an NPP minister who is being sent to speak for the MPP party and then they realize that you went to speak for the NDC, you'll be excommunicated or you'll be thrown out of the party because you are not a faithful and then loyal minister to the party. Another instance is that if you're an MPP Let's say you belong to the NDC. That is where you've been bred and then went for so many years. Now, even through the NDC, you've been able to cater for your child to the university level. You are always speaking of NDC to your child. And then one day you realize that the platform that you use to defend NDC, 
your child has also mounted the same platform, but rather defending the opposing party. You would never be happy about that or about it. Because your child is doing something contrary to the norms. So if you are a minister of God, he said that I must do the works of the one who sent me. Who has sent you? Who is your sender? Is it the true manufacturer, the creator of the heavens and the earth? Now you hear some in people in quotes, men of God. I've been called. I've been chosen by God. But from their works, from their deeds, you would realize that they are rather breaking, destroying, killing witches. That is what they've been mandated to do. So they've been able to develop certain prayer materials. I have this anti-witchcraft material that when you use, witches can never destroy you. They cannot orchestrate anything about you. Let's listen to even the words that emanate from our mouth. We so-called men of God who are being sent by God. It is stated that Jesus said, I must do the works of him who sent me. So with this, Stephen Adunche, the voice of God, wanted us to understand clearly that through the agent, you would know the manufacturer. Because the works of the agent shows clearly the kind of items, materials, spare parts that he is selling. If I'm, a, if I'm, I'm, I'm an agent of Toyota, I should be dealing with Toyota spare parts and not the other, the, the, um, the other stuff. So as being sent by God, you must do his works. And according to the Bible, he said that as long as he is in the world, he is the light of the world. If truly that same spirit that was running through Jesus Christ, that also ran through Paul, that manifested itself through all the disciples, if truly you are a man of God, and then you bear the same spirit. Then the Bible says that you are the light of the world. Then it means that wherever, whenever there is light in a room, it brings about illumination, that is understanding. You get to understand God's word. But how is it then that we call ourselves men of God? But rather, we are creating fear and panic upon the church members. Fear and panic, when there is light, there wouldn't be any fear. Nothing like panicking. When there is light, there's nothing like darkness. So how come we are using witchcraft as a bait to create fear and panic upon the church members, and then also to extort from them. This means that we are even making the darkness much more darker than before. According to Stephen Adum Chedia, the voice of God, for him and then under his ministry, now we can all attest the whole Christendom. This is the time that people have come to a realization that God is not the altar of confusion. God is the God of peace. So, under the ministry of Stephen Adum Chedia, you would never hear him telling you that your mother is a witch and the, the cause of this, your plight, is from your, your grandmother, from your aunt, whatsoever. He would just tell you, let your heart be at peace. Just listen to the word of God and then you, you attain your deliverance. God will manifest himself through you. And because of this, 
now families are reuniting there's re this reconciliation amongst families because of the words that emanate from the mouth of the voice of God, Stephen Adum Cheidia, Be because his words, they are light unto the world. Paul spoke about the light. The disciples also spoke about the light. In our era today, we are now witnessing and experiencing some that happened in the Bible today through Stephen Adum Cheidia, the voice of God. That one man, that vessel who carries God's voice, and God's voice is full of light. It brings understanding to the mind and to the heart. And because we have heard his word, today we all have been set free. All shackles in the eyes have been thrown away or have been vermuted. Let's continue with the word. Now the verse 6. When he had spoken, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay with a spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. And he said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which by interpretation means sent. He went his way thereof and washed and came seeing. Let's see that simple direction that Jesus did or ministered unto the man who was born blind. From this verse, from the verse 6 and then 7, a blind man who is being sent to the pool of Siloam to go and wash so that he, after that he would see. How would he, how did he do it? From where he was to the pool of Siloam. It means there was this little expenses. He had to spend a little. If there was Pragya around, he, he had to call for Pragya to take him to the pool of Siloam. To make sure that as he has been instructed by the directives, he would do that and then re take, recover his sight. So every prayer material comes with this little expenses attached to it. Over here, under the ministry of Stephen Adun Cheidia, he will just ask you, go and take Sobolo, which is two CDs. The last time I just heard someone took the Sobolo and then he was she was just relieved of her fibroid. Go and then use the grace water, which the price is very meager. Let's carry on. We will get to the prayer material section and then I will explain better to us. Well, according to Stephen Adum Chedia, the voice of God, men of God, so called men of God must be warned. Because it's like just Absalom, the, the, the son of David, just as he turned against his father. That is what we are also doing against the manufacturer of the one who created the heavens and the earth. The one who created all things, who created you and I. They are deviating from his path. And according to Stephen Adum Chedia, they must be warned. Else, after life here on this earth, they have a question to answer to the maker, the creator of the heavens and the, and the universe. So if you're a man of God, you should know the son of whom you belong to. And then everyone must eat what he grows. You must know the kind of manufacturing company which you are an agent to. Let's carry on and then move on to another quotation that Stephen Adum Chedia, the voice of God, gave unto us. 
I want us to take another quotation that is Proverbs chapter 8 from verses 1. Proverbs chapter 8 verses 1. Please, I don't know if we can project it. I want to try and then read from here. Proverbs 8 verses 1. Okay. Uh, Proverbs 8 verses 1. Do what not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? Do what not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? Wisdom, who is Christ, the Spirit of God? Is shouting and crying and because of that we shall attain understanding because Stephen Adum Chedia the voice of God has preserved himself forsaking himself denied everything about himself for Jesus Christ the Bible says that for the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So he is well endowed with wisdom from above. And through that, through his words, we now understand. Now you would hear most congregants under the Christendom. How come we heard these words? So, so many years ago, but we never understood. But today, under the ministry of Stephen Adam Chedia, we understand. This is because he has been endowed with wisdom from above. And this is because he fears God. And then he knows the kind of manufacturing company that he is working for. So he is an agent, just as Jesus became an agent for God the Father in heaven. Just as Paul became that true agent for Jesus Christ, so is Stephen Adum Chedia in our era today, in the eighth generation, has become a true agent for the manufacturer, who is God. Let's move on. She standed on the top, she standed in the top of the high places, by the way in the place of the path she crieth at the gates at the entry of the city at the coming in at the doors unto you O men i call and my voice is to the sons of man unto you the verse 4 Oh men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. Oh ye simple, understand wisdom. This is the verse that I like most, which I even circled. Oh ye simple, understand wisdom. Ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. The word of God is being communicated to the one who is grown in wisdom and then in the spirit. He said that all ye fools be of an understanding heart. Meaning the word of God is being unpackaged in wisdom in wisdom. So if you are a fool, you can never attain understanding unless you open your heart unto the wise saying from above. Why this quotation? Proverbs chapter 8 from verse 1 reading downwards. From Stephen Adum Chedia, the voice of God. We men of God. The Bible says that God is not the altar of confusion. But we men of God, we are rather creating fear and panic on the church members. Creating this sort of confusion among family members. You visit the church today 
and because of just this little problem that you are facing or this little challenge that you are facing, a man of God will look at you in the face and then tell you that your mother, the one who breastfed you, who kept you in the womb for nine months and then breastfed you, fed you very well until now you are a full grown man. A man of God will look at you in the face and tell you that the main cause why your business is not booming is that your mom has been a stumbling block. She is the one bewitching you. Such an insolence in the house of God. The word of God states that in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 19, so I, I don't know if I'm mistaken, but this is the word of God. It said, I am the one who kills and give life. I wound and I heal. For no one can ever take this from me. So as a child of God, when you are facing this little challenge of sickness, ailment, why is it then that so-called man of God, one who claims to be sent by God, and then one who said he is doing the works of the one who has sent him, trying to direct you out of the path, but rather instead of them to direct you to God, that he is the cause of your plight, the cause of your ailment. They are rather in as defenders of witchcraft and witches, witchcraft defenders, and witches defenders for witches. And through this, they've been able to create, come about certain materials, which are also being tagged with, with the witchcraft names. They have this material, so so and so witchcraft. We have this anti witchcraft material. If you use it, all witches in your family will die. A man of God with, with harboring this kind of mentality. And this is ever true because Jesus said that those who took after him were den of robbers, thieves. They built upon this just to extort from the, the church members, the children of God. And then with this, as the Bible says that by their fruits, ye shall know them one by one. Well, let's move on to the prayer materials. What is all about prayer materials? We have explained a lot from what Stephen Adun Chidia, the voice of God, said concerning prayer materials. With the prayer materials, faith without works is dead, meaning you need something as a point of contact to connect yourself unto God in your prayer. So Paul advised Timothy. Timothy was someone who was suffering from stomach upset. For so many long a time, he was that holy disciple, but he was suffering this kind of ailment. But when Timothy met Paul, Paul said, <laughs> do you know what Jesus left for us? His blood. Just go and then take that wine from grape. That same wine that is being used to treat ailment. Don't drink this wine in the name of your ailment. But take it as per the commands given unto us by our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus took this same wine and gave it unto his disciples. That take, this is my blood. When they drank, they realized it was this normal wine they used to treat, treat their ailment and then stuff. This is the same wine that the good Samaritan also used to treat the sores of the man who was wounded. But Jesus took this same wine and said, drink, for this is my blood. That was the advice Paul gave to Timothy. And immediately when Timothy took the blood of Jesus, he was set free. So does that mean that we should, they, they, those days they should have gotten that wine and then named or brand 
put them in bottles and then brand them with stomach upset medicine or medicine for treating stomach upset. No. According to Steve Nadum Chedia, the voice of God, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and then the God of Jacob. He said that when he had an encounter with divinity, with a triangle God, he said that he was being advised that in your homeland, your nation, they depend on wild foods. They eat these wild foods from cocoa yam, um, cassava, and then from trees. What have you? And because of that, these wild foods produce this sort of adverse toxin effect when we take these wild foods. And with, even with the wild foods, we would have to boil before. But with the Israelites, they feed mostly on flour made from grains. And for them, because when you take in a lot of flour, if you don't take care, you will be unable to empty your bowels. Constipation will set in and that is why they take this wine just to make sure that they have easy bowels, free bowels. Jesus took this same wine and then called his blood. They should drink of it henceforth. In our land, in Ghana, per the directions given unto him by God through the angel of Philadelphia, said because we depend on wild foods and then over here in our homeland Ghana we also have this locally concocted made medicine that we use most often we all came to meet which we call Dido in our local dialect this is the same locally made medicine that our Lord Jesus Christ instructed him to use in to represent his blood. So he said according to him in Exodus chapter 30 from verse 18 downwards. When the Lord God called Moses. He instructed him to, to do certain things. There were certain materials that the Lord God instructed him to pick. And then with that he said that he is going to show or manifest himself. On certain materials, he instructed Moses to pick and then use in his name. When God sent Moses, he made sure that Moses was well resourced for the task. In our era today, the Lord God of Abraham, the Lord God of Moses, the Lord God of Paul, of Peter, that same God has sent Steve Nadum Chedia, the voice of God today in our era. And then he also instructed him that Adam, go and then I will show you the right materials to pick. I would manifest myself in those materials for you to see. You will see this kind of sign. Where, whatever material that I manifest myself to, I will make sure you see a sign. Pick those materials up and then mix them together under a definite proportion. And then call it Yesu Moja, the blood of Jesus, the grace wine. And then through that, whoever takes this blood of Jesus in remembrance of me, I, the Lord God, will manifest myself in such a person. And that is why today, when you take the blood of Jesus, the grace wine, your sickness, you're, you are being healed of your sicknesses. Let's see um, the numerous devastatious ailments that has visited the ministry of Stephen Adum Chedia. People coming in with numerous, some even come with this devastation. Um, skin cancer we have some with breast cancer what have you but when you take the blood of Jesus just in remembrance of him healing is just your bonus 
So Stephen Adun Chedia, the voice of God, he has been able, through faith, he has explained, he explained that last week, to create Adumunyame, the gracious God. And through that, he has developed the prayer material. Just as Moses also did that, we had the God of Moses. And Moses, through the encounter that he had with God, also had his prayer or assigned materials that he was, he was being instructed to use to feed the sheep. In that same vein, Stephen Adum Chedia, the voice of God, has been sent to set the captive free and to deliver the sick. And because of that, we now have the grace wine. Yes, Muja. I'm going to take us through all the prayer materials. We have the grace wine, which is the Yes, Muja. The next one is the grace oil. The grace oil. The Bible states that when any of you is sick, let that person plead for forgiveness of sin and then apply the oil on such a person. Per the instructions given to Stephen Adamichedia, the voice of God from the angel of Philadelphia, he said that he should make sure that with this oil that he's going to prepare, he should get this original virgin oil from the olive tree add certain materials which he would show him and then prepare the grace oil. And when it is done, he should instruct his people, the Philadelphia Royals, to use it in the name of, Oh, Father, I'm anointing myself in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Lord, count me as one of your sons. When we were reading the verse 4, he said, Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. Jesus was the son of man. So if truly you are the son of man, then when you are applying the grace oil, you should know the son of whom you belong to. We have the grace water. In that same vein, he was being instructed to make sure that he dig very down to the deep. The water that he would acquire, he should add certain materials and then call it the grace water. And then with this grace water, we know Jesus is the fountain of life. The Bible says that his voice is like unto many waters. So any land that is, is barren for so many years that is dried up or has been dehydrated. And then any land that is dehydrated, when you plant a seed on it, it will never germinate. That is why when you visit other places, because you yourself, you are in the dehydrated state. And then when you visit other places, instead of them to add or irrigate you, put on water on your soil, they will rather make sure the dehydration level has been raised. So that is why we are killing, we are shooting, we are killing our enemies and then it's all amounting to cause zero. Over here under the umbrella of Stephen Adum Chedia, when you apply the grace water, it means you are irrigating your land, that dehydrated land. And because of that, when a land is well, well irrigated, it means it is ready for cultivation. And that is why we are attaining testimonies upon testimonies. So, per the instructions given unto Stephen Adunchedia, the voice of God, through the help of the angel of Philadelphia, we use that in that vein to connect ourselves to the Lord. We also have the grace powder grace powder according to steve nadum chedia he said when the lord was sending him he said go to your homeland your nation 
And then in your nation, what do people use? Most often when there is victory, they use powder. That's what they use. He said, most people use this powder rather in the name of victory they have won over witches. <laughs> victory they have won over witches. I'm very happy today because the witch in my life is dead. Someone who has, who has this suicide bombing mentality. I'm happy today because all my enemies are dead. David said, Thou shalt put before me a table before myself and then my enemies. Jesus also has instructed that we should not kill our enemies. But why is it then that we are rejoicing over so-called enemies, people that we think are fellow human beings, whom we think are enemies, and then we are, they are dead. They died at um, the guns that we fired on them tonight. Let's carry on. So with the grace powder, according to the instructions given to Stephen Adun the voice of God, we Philadelphians, we use it as a sign of victory over any challenge that we face or that comes our way. And then we know that if there will be a challenge, the Lord's prayer says that thou shalt not take us into temptation. So whenever there's a temptation, then it means the Lord, God, who is the Alpha and Omega, he started it. So we use that in the name of God, grant us victory over this challenge. According to Stephen Adum Chedia, and this reminds me of something that Stephen Adum Chedia, the voice of God said, it's quite a pity that we have turned our manufacturer, God, some men of God, they have turned their God, which they proclaim they've been sent, they, they, they are their, is their sender, into Zoom lion personnel. Why? Because in the administrations, at times, um, you hear this funny comment. The supposed witch or victim, um, they, they, they took your womb, and then and they threw it into the, the, the headquarters of the refuse dam. So Jesus, the Zoom Lion personnel, must go to the refuse dump and pick up your womb and replace it. Such an insolence, such an insult to divinity. So according to Stephen Adum Chedia, the voice of God, and for the sake of time, with his prayer materials given unto him by God, when you are using it, you are using it for the fact that there is nothing else apart from God. Just as Jesus said, not this man has sinned, neither his parents, but just that the works of God shall be made manifest through him. In that same vein, the Lord Jesus who has sent the voice of God unto this world, when you are using the materials, you are using it in the name of Lord, I have sinned against you. Have mercy. You are pleading for grace. The grace of the Lord that God should open the floodgates of heaven so that his grace will be showered upon him, upon you. So this is how we use our prayer materials as Philadelphians. We use it in the name of God and nothing else. We have the gray soap, which as Stephen Adun Chedia, the voice of God also stated, in Israel, they also use the he soap to plead for cleansing and then purification. We also use the gray soap to plead for cleansing and purification. The Lord bless us all. Wrapping up by the message given unto us through Stephen Adun Chedia, the voice of God. Let's be mindful and take note of the manufacturer and the agent. By their fruits, ye shall know them one by one. Mango tree can never bear orange fruits. And an orange tree can also never bear mango fruits. The Lord bless us all for today's summary. Amen.